I'm Tamara, and this is TELUS Talks with Tamara Taggart. We're bringing together experts, thinkers, and leaders, busting myths, sharing stories, and staying connected when Canadians need it the most. We're having unexpected conversations for unprecedented times. Hi, Jackie. how are you? I'm great. Hi, Tamara, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. So listen, I was doing a little bit of homework on you and uh, (laughs) I was watching some videos and uh, of you speaking at different um, health symposiums and conferences. And the thing that became really clear to me is how passionate you are about health and uh, and you know, I, I've seen a lot of people speak and uh, I consider myself a little bit of an expert when it comes to public speaking. Okay. Well, no, and I really, I really can, I, I know when someone is speaking from a real place, I just don't know what your story is. So I, that's where I want to start. I want to know, like you, you've been, I think you've been with TELUS for quarter a million years, <laughs> yeah. a quarter of a century. Yes. So, uh, you know, there was no TELUS Health 25 years ago. So no. this, so I don't know, there's something, there's a story here and I want to know what it is. Sure. Yeah, there is a story uh, in terms of why I'm involved in health, I think is what you're asking. But yeah, there's a story. Um, I I have been really lucky to have had a pretty fantastic, uh, a number of careers with this organization over a long period of time. I grew up in this company and, and you know, did some pretty exciting stuff, was really fortunate to get a lot of opportunities to do some interesting things. And then about, I think it was now 10 years ago, um, uh, you, you know, it, it happened that my mom, my mom, Tamara, is uh, the most motivating force in my life and always has been. And she's the kindest. Uh, she's the kindest and most optimistic person. She's very healthy. She's, uh, you know, she 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 was she was vegetarian before anyone even thought about it. And all of those things, anyway. Um, and I and I and I hope to be as kind as she is. Um, but anyway, what happened about ten years ago is she. Um, started to experience some symptoms. Uh, she went, she checked herself in the hospital. I remember I was at the airport coming back from some training that I was on and I was talking to her and she's like, you know, I just don't feel right. And, uh, and it was on, um, a good Friday. And so she said, I'm just going to go get checked out at the hospital because her doctor wasn't available. Uh, and so she went to the hospital and I was flying back. And so uh, when I got back to Vancouver, I met her at the hospital and they started to do a whole bunch of tests. And <clears throat> they said, oh, we think that, you know, um, she's probably got indigestion. Uh, she had some interesting symptoms. And, and she said, they said, well, we think it's probably just indigestion. And, uh, you know, we're going to run these tests, et cetera, et cetera. And then they ran the test and they said, yeah, we think it's indigestion. And my mom said, you know, I, I don't feel right, though. Like, it doesn't feel like indigestion. Then they ran one of their last tests and I had actually been putting all our clothes in a bag and we're ready to go and feeling happy and relieved that it's nothing serious. But at the same time, looking at her and she's like, something's not right still. And in, to, in her intuition was kicking in for sure. What they what they did then was they ran this one last test called the troponin test, which talks to you about how many um, what, what your heart enzymes are doing and the enzymes that are damaging heart muscle and whether or not they're being mm-hmm. released in the system. And the very last test, they said, it's just a formality, last test, and then you guys can go. And then they came back and said, uh, she's actually having a heart attack. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so we were getting discharged uh, just before that with indigestion uh, as as a diagnosis. So she was having a heart attack. And so my mom doesn't have any other, you know, health issues or ailments or things of that nature. So it came as a shock. What happened next was probably even worse, uh, was that they told us because it was a holiday that they didn't have the uh, cath lab in to do the emergency angioplasty that she needed to have. And so, you know, we were shocked, right? She has a, she's having a heart attack. She needs to get the angioplasty done and it's on Good Friday because it's a holiday. They're not here. Uh, And so I said, Mm. well, can we transfer her to another hospital? They said, no, that's not possible. Uh, You're going to have to wait until probably Tuesday or Wednesday of next week to get the angioplasty that she needs. And so I sat back and, you know, I've always 
been really proud of the Canadian healthcare system, the fact that we can get access to it. And I think we look at other places around the world and we think, wow, aren't we so lucky? And I sat back and I felt the most helpless that I've ever felt in terms of being able to help my family with a situation that they're dealing with. And I started calling people that I knew, uh, ran into some walls. Then finally, I came upon someone who said, let me look into this. Uh, they found out that actually my mom could get transferred. She was going to get transferred to VGH at that point in time. And uh, she was going to get the uh, angioplasty that she needed. They were going to be bringing the lab in to help her. And so my mom is all of a sudden when everything, nothing was going to happen, then everything was actually happening. Mm. And, and I felt at that time relief that mom was going to get the help she needed, but at the same time felt this not right. Like all Canadians should have access to this. And she wasn't feeling good about it. She said, well, what about all the other families that are waiting? And you know, mm -hmm. what about them? And I'm like, mom, you know, when you're going to get moved there, the other people that are waiting, they're going to get the same treatment too. And so because of you, other people are also going to be helped. And please just relax and get the help that you need. Mm -hmm. And so she did. And they found that uh, her artery was 100% clogged. It absolutely needed the emergency angioplasty. That transfer, you know, saved her life. And after that, I thought, okay, so yeah, I've had a great career here. Um, I, I think that other people need to benefit the same way that we did. And the system does need to get help. And how can I help? So I thought one of three things I have to do, I either have to go back to school and become a doctor. Maybe I'll be able to help people one by one. It would take me some mm -hmm. time, but I think I could do it. A second thing is, is uh, maybe I can get involved um, on the political or government side and help on the bureaucratic side to change some of these policies that are impacting uh, you know, people's access to healthcare. And then third, I thought, wait a minute, we have a division within TELUS called TELUS Health. I'm already here. Maybe there's something that I can do in that regard to help change access to healthcare for all Canadians. Uh, and so that's what I did. I then decided to, I thought my job and my career have been, have been great to me. I've learned a lot, but it has to mean more. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I need to now dedicate this next phase of my life doing that. And so then I moved into the TELUS Health side of our business and I've been, you know, working hard trying to change access to healthcare for Canadians so that they can benefit. And I'll tell you, mm -hmm. it was on Good Friday. Um, uh, we launched our service, our Babylon by Telus Health service, a year ago now. And on Good Friday morning, I, I checked, and as I check every day, I checked to see like how quickly can somebody see a doctor if they need to see a doctor right now. And it was at nine o'clock in the morning, and it was twelve minutes away that they could see a doctor if they needed to mm -hmm. on a day. So, so that was pretty important moment for me uh, on my journey to to really help uh, you know transform and revolutionize access to healthcare for all Canadians. Mm -hmm. so yeah, well, it's quite a story, and you know, we we all have a health story, right? Every single person has a health story. We all have. I mean, it is, you know, we are nothing if we don't have our health, right? And 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 none of us get through this life unscathed. So that's right. Uh, there's always a lot going on, and and I, I I also, you know, yeah, this is the you know the tell us talks with Tamara Taggart podcast, and yes, you Juggy, you work for Tell Us, but. Nobody's telling me what questions to ask you. This isn't like I wanted to talk to you because I you uh you're you're a bit of a legend. Oh, like, whereas you are no, you are because you're very passionate. And people who are passionate at what they do uh are the people, you know, they create real change. And so that's why I wanted to chat with you about it because um, you know. I think that those of us who were born and raised in, in BC, uh, you know, TELUS is always the phone company and they have phones and your home phone and it's really evolved. And uh, there's this whole new, um, you know, uh, area of, of TELUS called TELUS Health. And it's not just Babylon. It's not just this virtual health idea. It's, there's a lot more to it, yeah, isn't there? Absolutely. Um, I mean, where do you even start when you start telling people what, because here's the thing, you guys are not very good at telling people what you do. <laughs> <laughs> so let's tell, let's share some of the things that you have been working on. Like, uh, can I ask you about uh, seniors? What, what's something, are you doing anything oh, for yeah. seniors? Oh yeah. Yeah, we are. And we're just getting started. Uh, thank you for, for, for asking all of that, Tamara. We, we're not new in the healthcare game. So I, I joined uh, TELUS Health when I, when I made that change after my mom, it's been in almost eight years now uh, that I've been working in the healthcare side of our company. And we, we actually started Telus Health about 12 years ago. 
Uh, we've spent probably three billion dollars building this secret business <laughs> that people don't really know about, and um, and we, you know what, we we made a decision, uh, you know, and we said, you know, and Darren Entwistle made this decision and said, look, you know, healthcare and public healthcare right now in Canada needs help, and it's probably the most important challenge, a social challenge of this generation, and so instead of you know buying sports companies or broadcasting or what have you, we're going to put a shoulder behind helping this public situation and helping the public sector with this problem because we all stand to benefit society needs us to and that's what we did and so we we now have you know we're we're the largest healthcare IT company in Canada and our focus and our mission is we want to revolutionize access to healthcare. And so we're, and who better than us, the telecommunications company who knows how to secure information, move information uh, fast and from a healthcare standpoint, we're going to make sure that the information gets into the right hands at the right time so that a right health outcome can be made. So whether it's mm-hmm. electronic medical records, pharmacy management software, uh, whether it's our virtual care services, which are a core part of our, our healthcare business, uh, you know, we've got a variety of products and services. And so when you come back to seniors, uh, which is, again, very near and dear to my heart, I have another story on the senior side with my poor grandfather who was uh, quite sick with congestive heart failure. And, you know, we were back and forth in and out of the hospital because that, that condition requires you to be monitored uh, by doctors and, 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 and healthcare providers. And then when I moved into TELUS, unfortunately, he passed from congestive heart failure and, you know, the end was pretty bleak. Um, but now when I came onto the healthcare side of TELUS, we have something called home health monitoring. And I worked on that project with us, uh, with a, a number of talented individuals at TELUS. And what that is, is we allow people who have congestive heart failure or COPD, we give them the technology so that they can be monitored from home. We connect them to the doctors and nurses so that, you know, they can check their vital signs every day and make sure that, you know, their pulse oxygen levels are at the right level, you know, that their weight is at the right level, their blood pressure is at the right level. And, you know, we allow seniors, most of these people are seniors, we allow them mm-hmm. to be, you know, at home uh, instead of in a home, Tamara. And I think that that's where people would want to be. And we and we let them do it with dignity and grace. And we make sure that that's there. We give them the hope that they need. Um, another product that I've, we, we, we offer is called Living Well Companion. And this is a personal emergency response service designed for seniors. And again, to give seniors and caregivers like us peace of mind to know that, you know, if seniors are at home, And they're by themselves. uh, And if they're worried about, you know, falling ill or falling, uh, the service will detect that it's GPS enabled, we'll be able to dispatch emergency services to them 24 seven. And and again, like, you know, people want to be at home and they want to live independently for as long as they can. And, you know, digital health solutions like these allow them to do that. And I'm, I'm, I'm very proud and privileged to be part of an organization that is making this their mission and to helping at all levels of society. So seniors, chronically ill people, you know, average people that are trying to get access to a doctor and might not have one. Uh, We have our mobile health clinics that are all across the country, you know, bring mm-hmm. health care. To- Tell me a little bit about those. What do, what does a mobile health unit do? So a mobile health uh, uh, unit is a, is a van equipped with doctors, our technology, and, you know, it's, it's going to help vulnerable populations on the street and delivering health care when they need it, meeting them where they're at. And, and that's what we're doing across the country. We have, you know, a variety of different partnerships with health authorities or charitable organizations that are trying to, you know, they're joining us on our mission. Uh, we're putting our, our, our the best of us together and uh, and helping people on the streets get healthcare when they when they need it and mm. where they need it. We can't expect everyone to just come to us from a healthcare standpoint. We have to bring healthcare yeah. students. Out to people. Well, and the thing is, for a lot of people, uh, they are very nervous or scared to go to a hospital or go to a doctor's office for whatever uh, reasons uh, they may have. So it's, yeah, absolutely. And aren't there millions of Canadians that don't have uh, a family doctor? Yes, there are 5 million Canadians that don't have access to a regular family doctor. And, you know, the numbers in our province here in British Columbia are 800,000. It's about the same in Alberta. Um, and, you know, it's getting worse, not better. Uh, you know, being a GP and have, being a family doctor, it's hard. And you know, mm-hmm. people are retiring. It's hard to find someone to take over your practice. 
And, and so I think we need to be looking at different ways of delivering healthcare. And the other, the other piece of that, Tamara, is, you know, not just for people who don't have a doctor, what do you do after 5 p.m. when you need healthcare support? Mm. Where do you go? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, health, uh, health issues don't uh, happen nine to five usually. No, <laughs> they, they don't. usually happen. Yeah. After, and, and in my case, they happen on a holiday where, you know, there's even less mm. staff available and you need health care support or, you know, and if you live in a remote community, you know, maybe you see a family doctor once every two or three weeks. And, you know, I hear stories about people saying that we used to have a family doctor and now we don't. And with Babylon by Telus Health and with our virtual care services, we're bridging the gap. And so you can get access to a doctor, a family doctor, anytime you need to, including holidays and weekends and after hours. Okay, so explain to me who who are these doctors? So I, you know, I, I use if I use virtual health, I know that some doctor's offices are doing their own thing. Yeah, and that's great if you have a family doctor. Yeah. Uh, if if it, let's say it's 10 o'clock at night and I, um, you know, I'm having an issue and I want to get a hold of a doctor. Who is this doctor? Are they a, are they a real doctor? Are they in the same province as me? Are they? Yeah, who are they? They are. <laughs> and so so we offer our our our, our service, uh, Babylon by Telus Health in, in British Columbia and Alberta. I've expanded to Ontario uh, and we're going to be taking this to other provinces really quickly here as well. And so they're all locally licensed doctors. Uh, these are doctors that are in your community. Now, in Vancouver, you might have a doctor, a, a Babylon by Telus Health doctor that's located in Vancouver, or they could be on Vancouver Island. I mean, that's the beauty of the technology that you could be mm. anywhere, but you, you do need to be a locally licensed doctor to be a part of our Babylon by Telus Health service. And that's who you're seeing. And, and I think that, you know, one thing I would say is what's really important to us as we're delivering the service is the quality of the service has to meet the standards that we believe people can deserve to get. And so what that means is after every uh, consultation you have with one of our Babylon by Telus Health doctors, we get you to give us a rating. Tell us out of five, how was this healthcare experience? Did it meet your needs? Did you get what you needed? Um, was the doctor compassionate? Did they take their time with you? And our average after thousands and thousands of consultations that we've now completed, the average Tamara is 4.9 out of five from all of those people. And I'm really, wow. I'm really proud of that. And that's, that's, that's the goal that we have. And we're going to keep, keep making sure that we never, ever sacrifice the quality of the service mm -hmm. and we deliver healthcare the way that people want it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, I met you, uh, we've only met in person once and it was, uh, over a month ago. And after I chatted with you, I felt really inspired. And, and so I went and I loaded the, uh, I, awesome. I went and loaded the app on my phone. Thank you. I, uh, well, you don't thank me yet because <laughs> <laughs> I loaded it in and then it came to the part where I had to put my information in. Yes. And I, I'm not going to lie, Juggy. I no. was a little nervous because, yeah. you know, we're, we're living in this digital age now, right? Yeah. And, you know, I can load all kinds of apps from the app store in and they want to know what my this is or my that is. Yeah. I, I, I felt kind of weird about a health one. I was like, whoa, like, okay, so I'm going to. But then I thought to myself, well, I've been doing online banking for a long time. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And I do that from my phone. Yeah. So I can't be alone in this thought process of being a bit nervous with my personal information. So maybe you could talk a little bit about how safe is my information? Who owns my health records? Uh, should I be worried that you're not going to sell them one day or, mm. you, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I think those are all really valid. They're valid concerns. Those are real concerns that people have. And I, I, I think what's important to know are a few things. So, so when we are a telecommunications company, we are in the business of protecting very sensitive data. Data, and we have been in the business of doing that for years and years and years. Healthcare data is, uh, you know, also really important and very sensitive data. We meet or exceed the standards that are set for us uh, at the federal level. So I think that that's important to understand. We have a, a privacy by design mindset. So it's not an afterthought. We are designing our products and services to meet or exceed those standards. Okay. The second thing I would say is your data the, is not on your phone. So you're submitting it. It's, it's being stored securely. Uh, and we're storing that securely on your behalf in Canada. So it's not on your phone. So if you lose your phone, as an example, 
you know, it would, it would, it would be terrible if you lose your phone. Okay. And, mm. and Telus has stuff that we can help you with on that front, but, um, but your data is not on your phone. So the data is being securely stored on your behalf, just like your bank, your banking information. Right. And, and you make a really good point, Tamara, like, like our phones have become, I think an extension of us in so many ways. And it, it's certainly become our wallet, hasn't it? And so you mm. can pay for things using your phone. You can do online banking on your phone. You can do shopping on your phone. You should be able to conduct healthcare on your phone too. Uh, and and you you deserve to have the convenience of that, and you should know and trust that we are protecting your data, just like all the other information that's flowing through it. Healthcare information is protected to the highest degree, and in terms of mm. selling your data, um, you know we would we we would never do that. And and I think that you know we have our policies lined very clearly. You can see uh, the details of of what we do with the data and where it is. It's your information, your health record, mm. your health record, and your health information. That's yours. And you know, even when you go see a doctor in a clinic or in a practice, you know, those are your health records and you should have access to them. And I think that, you know, another aspect of our service, which I think has been really compelling for people, is that we we make sure that our doctors type plain notes for you to understand, right? So it's not in doctor speak, it's plain. And so after every consultation, those plain notes are 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 in your file that you can reference at any time you need to. It'll talk about what you guys talked about, you know, what the issues were, what the recommendation was. Uh, the video recording is also there for you if you need to consult that again. Think about how many times you go to a doctor and you forget what they told you. All the time. Right. All the time. Because you're probably anxious in, the, in why you're even there yeah. in the first place, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because what you're talking about, it, it it's a game changer, really. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm thinking about, you know... Uh, you know, health crises that we've had in in our, my own family, right? Right. Uh, and you know, uh, I, I'm it's slowly becoming a distant memory, but I had cancer like eight years ago, oh and gosh. if I would have had access to this, yeah, you know, to be able to get online and ask a doctor, okay, yeah. I've started this chemo drug, I'm throwing up all the time. Is this normal? Right. That would have really helped me, not only physically, but just what's happening in my brain, you know, as I go to sleep and I'm worried about everything that's happening. Um, And we know that there's there's millions of people that are going through, um, you know, yes, we're in the middle of a pandemic uh, and it's horrible. And virtual health has probably never been more important than it is right now. Right. Uh, And I think that's making it very clear to a lot of people. but. Other things aren't stopping, Juggy. Like I people know. are still having heart problems. They're they still uh, dealing with cancer. They're still, they you know, are. people are diabetic and need to see a doctor or I kidney know. failure, whatever it might be, I right? Know. I know. So, I know. so as you're speaking about it, I really, you know, do you, have you been wondering what what will virtual health look like after this pandemic? Like, because it, it's yeah. really made it apparent how important it is. Yeah, you know how important it is, and also how effective it can be. It doesn't work for everything. If you have an emergency situation, you need to go to the emergency rooms. And in the and you just mentioned it here too in the pandemic right now. What what what? And I also I sit on the board for VGH and UBC Hospital Foundation, and what we're hearing is that people are worried about going into the ERs right now because of COVID and because of the crisis. And, 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 and that's problematic if you are having an emergency and you're not wanting to go into the emergency room. So I encourage people, if you're worried, you know, go, the hospitals are safe, go and go to the emergency room if you need to, you know, don't suffer. I think the other thing too is, you know, what's really important about all of the digital health solutions that we're talking about uh, is I, I really want people not to feel alone. So if you're, if you're, if you're suffering alone and you know, where are you going? You might go to your friends or your family to talk about what you're worried about, or you might go to Dr. Google. Okay. And then you, when you go on the internet, yeah, well, we've all done that and that's a problem. It is. And, and then you, and, and of course you're going to find the rarest of the rarest of the rarest, and then you're going to think you have it. And then you're just going to worry more by yourself. So getting Mm -hmm. access to healthcare when and where you need it is critical. And, and, and these virtual healthcare solutions we're talking about getting access to a doctor anytime you need to talk to them. If you can't get access to yours, if you're lucky enough to have a family doctor and you can't get access to them, use our service. And, and, and from a continuity of care perspective, which is really important to us, 
We'll make sure that the notes go to your family doctor. If you want, Mm. if you consent to that, we will send the notes to your family doctor so that they can still be that quarterback for you managing all aspects of your own health. Right. Uh, And and so many times I hear people saying, I was so worried. I didn't have anywhere to go. I didn't want to go to the ER. I suffered, you know, my, my kids were sick, et cetera. You don't have to do that anymore. And I think after, after this pandemic is over, because it will be over, it will be behind us. I think that people are going to realize that we can leverage technology. We can do it safely. We can we can experience the convenience that it offers us, and and I think that that will become commonplace, and as well it should. Uh, it won't work for everything, but it'll work for a lot. And before the pandemic started, you know, I, I've never seen advocacy for any product or service the way that I see it for healthcare services and for our virtual care services specifically, because it's putting safely. And, 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 and in a managed way, it's putting the power and control back into your hands. When mm-hmm. do you want to see the doctor? What do you want to talk about? Do you want to go you know, review those notes again to make sure you understand it? Do you want to show your partner or your spouse or your caregiver or your child you know, what, um, what was discussed so that they can be part of your caregiving as well? You have access to, to do all of that now. And I think it will become commonplace as well it should. Yeah. And I, I agree with what you said about n- not feeling alone. Right. Yeah. So when we were talking about seniors earlier, that's a real that's a real challenge for seniors because it can be very lonely. There are a lot of people that are on their own that aren't seniors. And then I was just thinking about, you know, single moms or single dads who, yeah. you know, have two, three kids. And it's not easy to pack everybody up and go to the doctor. That is not. hard. We've, not. you know, we've all done it and well, not all of us, but you know what I mean? It's very difficult. So to have this option is is, is really, uh, is really something. And it's, I guess, you know, what I'm listening to, what I'm hearing is this isn't the answer to everything, No, but it's, it's an important tool in your health toolbox. You bet. Like when was, you know? I, I often reflect and, and I use this analogy. When was the last time I actually went into a bank and stood in a line and actually did a transaction with a teller? Like I, I think I was, I don't know, a teenager, uh, you know, in terms of yeah. it's, it's become completely commonplace to do it with my phone. And now with touchless yeah. banking, with touchless banking, I, I don't even have to take my wallet out. I could just have my phone with me and the convenience. I'm not there yet. You're not there I yet? want you to know I am not there yet with touching my phone to anything for money. That sounds dangerous for somebody like me, uh, but you know, it's funny. You, you put it I know, right? Phone. Baby steps baby steps. Um, but it's funny because I remember when online banking came in Juggy, and everybody was like, whoa, put the brakes on this. This is too much. This is too dangerous. And now you're right. It's just commonplace. This is what we do. Let's just, um, as we're wrapping up here, let's just talk about COVID-19 and virtual care. Um, you know, we're, uh, Many of us are in isolation. Uh, we're yeah. following uh, the protocols that have been uh, put in place, and we're trying to, you know, we're trying to stop this from from spreading. What, you know, are there uh, with virtual care? Um, are there things that we can do? If I thought I had COVID nineteen, could I? Is there something I can do with yes, virtual care? Absolutely. So, uh, you know, download the app. Use our our artificial intelligence symptom checker. It's designed uh, to make sure that we can recognize things that are COVID related, and you can use that service. You can see a doctor right away if you want to talk to somebody and go through your symptoms, and you can book an appointment and you can get an appointment with one of our doctors within minutes, uh, and so you can see them. And of course, at no charge to you, right? Like, there's no cost associated with these uh with 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 our virtual care solution Uh, you can go and do that and and put your mind at ease and and make sure that you've got somebody that is a professional it's a person right it's a locally licensed doctor that's going to help you and uh and 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 you can do that after hours you can do it on weekends you can do it on holidays so whenever you need it it's there for you and um we also have a home health monitoring solution Uh, we partnered with the bc ministry of health and all the health authorities across the province, Tamara, to expand our home health monitoring solution that I talked about earlier so that it can help people who are dealing with COVID-19 to be recovering at home, but still uh, being connected with doctors and nurses, but recovering through the safety of their home. Uh, And so again, we give them the technology, we give them the the mobile uh, device, the tablet, uh, et cetera, and then we track their symptoms with them and connect them to doctors who can monitor them safely while they're at home. And we've done mm. just under 500 uh, people in British Columbia with this COVID-19 uh, home health monitoring solution uh, to date. 
Wow, that's amazing. Well, listen, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, chat with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, there's tons of good information here. And it really, you know, the bottom line is, is we all need to be our own health advocate. And, uh, and really, this is the way to, you know, like we said, right, another tool in our toolbox to help us along the way. So we really appreciate your time. Thank you, Tamara. And I think there's never been a better time where our our collective intellect has to be matched with compassion, uh, because we will get through this. And I think we need to take care of each other along the way. Thank you for everything that you're doing, Tamara, to help spread the word. Oh, thank you. Okay. And remember, you can visit telus.com slash health for more information or download the Babylon by Telus Health app today at any app store. And be sure to join us here on Telus Talks with Tamara Taggart every Tuesday and Thursday. 